Fantastic, and in this episode, I'm gonna be talking about how to inspire kids to make art. So let's dive in into this episode and let's make some art. Number one is that it's really important to in order to inspire kids to make art that you focus on creating a community. So in order to have that no trust factor um, built in where kids know you, they then trust you, um, and they can respect you and want to learn from you, um, you need to create community. Um, also, we want the kids in our classes to work together um, so that way they feel safe and then also is going to allow them to be vulnerable and also to create art, right? Because so art is kind of a vulnerable thing, right? Sometimes we're asking you to look into yourself or reflect and that vulnerability is sometimes kind of hard to express um, or acknowledge. So we want to make it a safe classroom. And that starts off with creating community. So focus on the initial um, couple months integrated into your lessons, right? Integrated into your learning or into your warm ups on creating community. Um, or using your think pair shares or your buddy learning or your group table discussions as ways to also create that community and that no trust factor. Um, but also with you, right? So you want your students to get to know you, right? That, that real you, that you like Harry Potter or you love Marvel or you love to go on hikes and you are a big dog fan and you have lots and lots of dogs um, and you just can't get enough of all those doggy pets and kisses. Um, and then they can be like, oh my gosh, I love dogs too, or I love Marvel too, or whales are also my favorite animal. And um, then you can create that connection and they can see that you're a real person and not a robot. Um, so it's important to create community for that no trust factor because it's easier to trust somebody when you actually know who they are. So no trust factor is important. So that is one of the first things to focus on. Number two is to create um, connections with your most challenging students first or those that show um, unexpected behavior. So inspiring kids who um, show, a, un, show unexpected behavior is really important. Um, one, it's easier to correct it or like be like, hey, maybe we cannot do that <laughs> when they trust you and actually like you and care about doing well for you. Um, so really just take the time to do that one-on-one -on -one with them, one-on-one -on -one learning or like small group instruction and pull the few of them that are in your class together and really ask them about them, get to know them, get to understand their likes and dislikes and you can integrate that into some of your teaching. Um, I mean, we're not, we're not putting them like, they're not like the only students that you're going to get to know and integrate their interests, but we're just going to make sure that we are paying attention to them um, and that we're helping them get through. We're helping them maybe, not, you know, they, maybe they need a little extra help because maybe they are a little bit behind and we want to make sure that they get caught up. And then they're gonna, when they have confidence, they're going to be like, oh, hey, I can do this, right? I can do this. I can be good at this. Um, and I don't have to act out to distract from the fact that I can't do this, right? Like, oh, I can do this. I can be successful. And then they're going to want to create. Um, because you've helped them get there. So it's thinking about it as a proactive approach instead of a reactive approach. Um, number So next is, before I continue on to number three, is to, uh, I have a question for you, which is what do you struggle with when it comes to teaching art? Please let me know in the comment section below the video and I will personally respond, as well as check out everybody else's questions and comments um, or answers to my question, I guess. And then you can check it out and use that as information for yourself too. And be like, oh, hey, I also relate to that. Wow. Oh, and look, at there's the answer. Or you might have some, you might want to comment on somebody else's and, and give advice. And maybe you have had a, a similar situation and then you can exchange approaches. All right, number three is to find out your students' interests and plan around your students' ideas, right? Make it student-centered. So finding out um, in the beginning of the year and even throughout the year because it changes um, what your students' likes are or your, their interests in your classes and that can inform your planning, right? Because now you can design your lessons themed around what their interests. Like you can teach the element of art themed around dolphins, for example, whatever. And there is something cool and trendy at the moment. You can still teach elements of art or whatever you have to teach through the theme of something else. And it might, they'll be like, oh my gosh, this teacher read my mind. I'm so excited for this because I love dolphins or whatever it is. Um, 
um, it changes all the time, so you can just make up the dinosaurs. Whatever it is, um, whatever the current cool thing is, insert that. Insert that, okay? Because <laughs> we know every year, if I if I define it right now, it's going to be different, right? Like one year it was llamas, and then it was unicorns, and then it was mermaids. Whatever it is, it's going to change. It doesn't matter. Just insert the cool thing right there. Right there. All right. And then number three, sorry, number four is to be excited and smile. Your kids are not going to be excited if you are not excited, right? Like they are going to feed off your energy. So the more you're smiling, the more you're excited, you're like, hey, I'm so excited to be here. Let's talk about this. Let's make some awesome art. If you're this energized, they're going to be energized. Because if I showed up, for example, on camera and I was like, okay, hi, I'm Ms. Artastic. And we're going to talk about how to inspire kids to make art. The first thing you're gonna do is you're going to create community. You're gonna do some community builders in your classroom. And that's gonna create community and your kids are gonna love it. All right, number two, you're gonna create connections with the kids that show unexpected behavior. You'd be like so bored and you'd be like, I'm out of here. And that's where kids are like too. Ah, this is boring, I'm out of here. So you gotta jazz it up even if you don't feel it, right? I'm talking technically to myself right now because I'm in my art studio and I just got a camera and there's literally nobody here. So, but I gotta bump it up and jazz it up because you are watching and I know that and I want you to be excited too and I want you to be like, yeah, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna inspire my students, then I'm gonna increase my participation, they're gonna be super engaged and it's proactive classroom management. If somebody says, hey, what are you doing in your classroom right now to be proactive in classroom management, you'd be like, hey, I'm trying to work on engagement strategies, I'm working on um, community builders and creating connections with my, especially with my, with my most vulnerable students. I'm putting in that extra effort to do small group instruction and one-to-one. -one. I'm trying to do student-centered learning where I'm basing all my lessons around my students' interests. Um, blah, 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 blah. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, you're on fire. Um, so that's kind of what I'm trying to use, like to be excited and smile. Even if you don't feel it, you're going to fake it till you make it. All right. So number five is do a lot of mixed media approaches. So I like to intentionally do mixed media art, especially in elementary, um, even into high school, but especially where I need to, I have students that are maybe not naturally loving art, I need to make it exciting. And I like to do this by changing up the medium. So I start, I start off my intro, it's exciting. We do some experimentation, I start the project. And then we're working and we're working and now we're starting to get bored because they're like, first they're excited, like, yeah, woo, it's oil pastel, look at this, look at this. Well, now we've been doing it for a day, so now it's kind of boring. So then I change it up and we're going to finish it off with some watercolor paints because now they're like, woo, -hoo! now I get to paint, woo, 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 and they're all re-energized and excited because now it's a totally different thing, even though it's the same art project, and they're going to finish it off with some watercolor paints and boom, it's going to look fabulous, we let it dry, and we got them to the end and they're engaged. They're connected, they're participating, cause, and we just got them there, right? We're just gonna continue to try to be like, look at this one, Oreo cookie, bear claw, cheesies, whatever. We're holding up the different little carrots to try to keep them engaged and, and, and uh, their attention there. Because it's kind of um, the fall of phones and some of the video games are always like, bing, 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 right? So now all those kids are used to this constant need for stuff. We, right are we not continuously scrolling on our phones yeah okay yeah we do it too we need new little cool things to kind of follow down a rabbit hole on right anyways so we kind of want to think about that just different strategies to keep it exciting and the energy flowing and the excitement happening throughout the the classes and then till the end of the year and then we're going to start all over again Woo! All right, my friend, now if you want to take it to the next level and you're looking for some more approaches, um, things like um, how to do lesson planning or how to plan your scope and sequence, if you're looking for some templates for all of that, if you're looking for some classroom management strategies, time management strategies, um, student participation techniques, um, engagement systems, if you're looking for um, how to be productive as an ed or educator, if you're looking for some proactive approaches to classroom management and communication, then make sure you check out my professional development course called Arts Teacher Academy. It provides 10 professional development um, hours and I'm going to be covering all these different systems that are going to help you go or they're going to help you transform from being overwhelmed and stressed out to calm, a happier, carefree, stress-free you.
yes, in my 10 hour pro D course. It is a course you can, um, you get unlimited access when to enroll and you can have forever access as well. It means you can do it as many times as you want. There's no time limit to when it's over and like, oh, you missed it. Sorry, you're out of your money. No, you get forever access to all the resources and templates and videos. You'll get lessons for all these different things like your lesson planning, your scope and sequences, they're all video lessons. And then they also get a workbook included. And I also provide all the templates to help you be successful and make your planning quickly, pl planning quick. Plus you'll also get my art creation toolkit as a special bonus for joining to help you get some art lessons that are pre-planned and ready to go to help you get started. If you're looking to join, you can join right now by scanning the QR code on the screen or clicking the link to Art Teacher Academy in the description of the video. It's a professional development course for art teachers, very specifically. Um, or if you want, you can just Google Art Teacher Academy and you'll find it that way as well. As well, I do need to let you know that my art curriculum is opening soon. My art curriculum, the Artastic Collective Art Curriculum is opening! In a few short days, the hours are counting down right now to when enrollment starts. The Artastic Collective opens um, in the very first week of August. So make sure that you are on the wait list right now so you don't miss out because I only open enrollment for five short days. That is it. I only have limited space. So make sure you are on that list of getting in. And then you'll have access to new art resources added to the curriculum every month. So that way you have access, um, art, fully art less, fully planned art lessons for the elements of art and principles of design, the artists and art history, um, for different themes, for all the holidays and seasons, for sketchbooks, for ceramics and sculpture, and so much more. There's also an art teacher growth course in there to help you plan your year and cover things like social emotional learning and planning your scope and sequence and then integrating all of this all of my resources in the Art Artastic Collective Art Curriculum to help you create an A and B year, rotating year, so you don't have any overlap as kids move through your years and grades. And, it's, and I also have an exclusive community form all built in, so make sure you check it out. My membership, the Artastic Collective Art Curriculum, also opens on the uh, first week of August, and I'll link to that in the description below the video as well. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited, so make sure you check it out. And I will see you in the next episode, which is teaching the elements of art to kids at home. You can click, watch that video by clicking the link above or in the description of this video. Please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel to help me continue to do this for you. And I will see you in the next